obviously I've been writing a ton more lyrics the past few years and I know the meaning behind every single word. You probably have a favorite lyric you don't even know the story behind. So tell me your favorite lyric and I'll tell you the story. Last summer I went to go see a lot of pop punk and hardcore shows. So I wanted to write a fictional lyric about how I got a black eye in the pit of one of the shows and Trophy Eyes is one of my favorite bands. So I just wrote a fictional scenario. A lot of the lyrics on I Know You Know Who I Am are about me being pissed off that I felt left out of the music industry and like I had no musician friends and like I wasn't let into any of the producer clicks. So that was me basically saying I can do things on my own. It's kind of an, it's, I'm just now realizing that I can't do, like these, the explanations for these require me to do one, more than one slide of story and it doesn't let me for some reason. It's just going to cut me off right here. That was essentially me coming to terms with the fact that those times were some of the best of my life. And when I was living them, I thought that everything was only going to get better. I thought as I grew up, you know, shit was going to just constantly be getting better. But now looking back, I realized that was one of the peaks in my life. And at the time, I, I thought it was my only peak. And that's why I was so nostalgic about it. But now New York family is all about how I'm very much on a second peak right now. <laughs> and living life in the present. I'm very happy about it. Yeah, that song's about Pierce and imposter syndrome. And it's about how us as musicians can be numb to our own music. But the way he wrote and the songs he wrote literally changed my life. Like I started writing music and getting into electronic music because of some of his music. 10 years ago, I started DJing because I heard For Me and Who Wants Spaghetti on YouTube. And if he hadn't wrote those songs and done them in his own unique style, I would have never been where I am today. And I remember I had vivid memories of him working on music and like shrugging stuff off or not liking ideas that I loved when I was sitting behind him because he was my hero. And to him, they might have just been shitty ideas, but to me, they, they, they were eye-opening. That entire song is me just reflecting on that chapter of my life and how important it was to me. For a lot of my music career, I was trying to like beat around the bush or not be very direct when I would sing about Japan and how much it influenced my life because I had some people when I was growing up who used to tease me about how much I enjoyed it there. And I was really embarrassed about it. I didn't want to be seen as like a Japanophile or a weeb. And I wrote that song as basically like a big fuck you. I'm like, this is all so important to me. I'm just going to write about like memory for memory, each thing literally, very little metaphor, just all of the memories I have and just like put it into the song. And just, there's so many lyrics in that song because there's so many memories and I just fucking was like pouring it in and just like not beating around the bush, referencing all of it like directly. And I'm really proud of it actually. That line specifically is about dating advice I got from somebody telling me that I needed to be rude to be cooler. And it's me saying, nah, <laughs> that doesn't work for me. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep being soft. And even if that means I get hurt in the end, um, changing myself for first impressions is not my thing. And the second line is me reflecting on like, I have so many members in my New York family and first, we're so far past first impressions that they mean nothing. And if I meet someone who I get along with, I don't, a first impression isn't even going to matter. They're going to like me right away. Uh, yeah. This lyric is just about the break I took in 2019 from music and how I needed it, but 
I would I could never stop making music. I had to keep going. Say Less is actually all about Punky, uh, a cat that I had the first six years I lived in New York. And after he passed away, I started writing that song and I was imagining what advice he would give to me. And Say Less is him being mute because he's a cat and Sing Loud is referencing the fact that he had such a monumental presence in my life, even though he was a cat. <laughs> That is specifically about how in 2017, 2018, I was traveling to Japan so much and it just felt like we had infinite possibilities when we woke up. There was an entire day ahead of us with shit that we wanted to do and then we would come home and just be destroyed every time. Stumbling, puking, 3 a.m. <laughs> but specifically when I wrote it and when I sing it, I think about this memory of a drunk friend of mine randomly breaking down at like 3 a.m. at the Megaro River about an ex and how sad he was and it seemed to come out of nowhere and that's the memory I had when I was writing that lyric specifically. Uh, this is a reference to the fact that every time I am publicly being belligerent online my dad calls me because he thinks I'm going insane. Huh, it's funny you mentioned that. Actually, um, when I'm talking about people chundering, I'm actually referencing very specific members of the uh, New York family who uh, have chundered uh, in my home on either the to toilet, <coughs> carpet, uh, hmm, sink, uh, and they've yet to pay their chunder charge. Uh, specifically, one member who is... Actually, also in my real family, uh, very strange. A little bit taller than me, a little bit skinnier, more like compressed and tall instead of smushed and wide. You know, blonde hair, blue eyed, weird. All the references to baseball on the I Know You Know Who I Am album are about the Shinjuku Batting Center because we spent so much time there. Swing for the fences. Uh, if you don't know baseball, I'm actually not even going to explain it to you because you're fucking. Only brother I wrote for my brother. I hope that's obvious. <laughs> Him and I have a great relationship, but because, you know, we're pretty stress-free, we haven't talked about a lot of serious things. And he's watched me go through a lot of growth and struggles that we never talked about. And I wanted to write to him saying, I know you've seen me grow and make all these fucking mistakes. You got five years to catch up to me. Are you going to live your life differently? If so, I'm glad I made all those mistakes so you don't have to. Or are you, do you want to make the same mistakes? Because I did and my life turned out pretty great. <laughs> it's basically, basically me saying, like, pay attention to what I did because either it's going to be a guide for you or give you something to avoid.